Nicole Lawson Live, living in victory every day. The choices we make can have lasting consequences. Today's main guest shares the reality of her decisions leading to having an abortion and shares candidly her experience. That actually happened right after my abortion. Mm -hmm. um, I was going through the pain, I was going through the process. And I remember sitting one day and telling myself, this is too much. This is so painful. This is so horrible. I don't want anybody else to have to go through mm. this. I don't want someone else. And if I could help somebody, and if I can stop them from doing this, mm. then I need to do that. Mm. This is not for me alone. I have to help others. Mm. Also, our mental health professional, Andrea Raghunath Gopal, joins us with some insightful information. And author June Doyle shares a motivational message as well as a beautiful song from artist Nataki Lendo. Live a life of victory and find peace and hope in today's troubled world. Visit us at Holiness Revival Ministries. Call 628-7407 or 622-5826. Fan Zone, your reliable, authentic supplier has just gotten better. You can now visit our website www.fanzonett.com for your authentic wear and collectibles. The only place where you can use both your Visa debit and credit cards. Visit our website, fanzonett.com, to make your purchase today. Shay Jean Designs in San Fernando provides customized clothing from sassy to corporate, conservative to casual. Email janiskazo at gmail.com or call 793-1668 for consultations. This is Nicole Larson live, living in victory every day. I have a very special guest sharing with us today, and I'll tell you something. You know, there's one thing to share your story in a forum, or maybe 50 or 60 people, and they listen, and they go away. But it's another thing to actually put pen to paper where you're sharing your journey, your intimate details. And this is what my guest has done. Who am I talking about? Karen Elias. Welcome. How are you? I am really good. How are you doing? I am not too bad. You are in the pink of health, I see. I am trying my very yeah. best. And you're doing a good job. You're not trying. <laughs> you're Thank good. You. You're real, real good. <laughs> As I was saying, you know, I listen to your story and I say, oh my goodness, talk about being brave. <laughs> talk about being courageous. And again, I want to commend you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you for talking and speaking to women and men, people who need to know about this issue and not being afraid. Wow, thank yeah? you. Yeah, thank what are we you. talking about? We're talking about abortion. We're talking about your book that you penned, mm -hmm. your personal journey. Mm -hmm. Even before we go into that, why, Karen? Why you felt you needed to put pen to paper and share? Wow, that actually happened right after my abortion. Mm -hmm. um, I was going through the pain, I was going through the process. And I remember sitting one day and telling myself, this is too much. This is so painful. This is so horrible. 
I don't want anybody else to have to go through mm. this. I don't want someone else. And if I could help somebody and if I can stop them from doing this, mm. then I need to do that. Mm. This is not for me alone. I have to help others. Mm. And then fast forward a couple of years, then I started writing. It actually took me three years yeah. <clears throat> to write this book because yeah. I would start and stop and start and mm -hmm. stop because the reality of yes. putting it pen to paper, as it you actually said. It started to hit you. Ooh, yeah. it hit hard. Yeah. I would write and I would close the laptop mm -hmm. and I'd open it back a couple of weeks mm -hmm. after. Mm -hmm. But it started so many years before mm -hmm. telling myself someone needs yeah. to know how horrible this yeah. is. So let me share it yeah. so I can stop at least one person. Yeah. Well, let's start from the beginning. You, Karen, a young lady, vibrant, mm -hmm. a dancer, and uh, getting yourself into this position as it were yeah share with us my brother was also in this position where he and his girlfriend was having a baby out of wedlock and that happened to me when i was 16 years old and i saw what it did to them i saw what my brother went through i saw what she went through i saw it all happening and playing out inside of the church and I told myself that would never happen to me. I was not going to go through that. So when I found myself in the position, it was almost like a split second decision. Mm -hmm. Because I remember, because even though mm -hmm. I wasn't going through it directly, the trauma of it was still very real. The trauma of how they were treated, the trauma of what things said about them and about my family, about her family. I did not want to go through that again. I did not want my family to go mm -hmm. through that again so it's almost a split second decision to say i'm not going through this i'm going to go the other mm -hmm. road of abortion mm -hmm. not knowing mm -hmm. what that road mm -hmm. really entailed so it was about saving face your face yes you thought of, of your family as yeah. well what people would say because you were a lovely upstanding young lady yes and not expected to i don't know have sex correct yes <laughs> correct you know? and you did yeah. So now I have this life inside of me. I need to get rid of this life yeah. so that my family would not be shamed and people would not look at me differently. Am I yes. putting words in your mouth or that is how you No, got? no, no, that's exactly mm -hmm. it. That's exactly it. Because um, it happens all of the time. And there's so much backlash that comes with a teenager, or not yeah. just a teenager, but a single woman yeah. out of um, wedlock and married in the church. And I really was thinking about everything you just said. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you were a Christian. You are a Christian. Yes. But of course, this audience is non-Christians, you name it, from whatever background, that would be going through a similar journey mm -hmm. as in getting pregnant. All right, not planned and getting pregnant. And right. what do I do? I raise my hands up, Lord, what do I do? Who do I speak to? So when you found out you were pregnant, what was your initial response? Shock and awe. Mm -hmm. Totally confused. Yeah. That I remember asking myself several times, how did I get here? Mm -hmm. How did I get myself in mm -hmm. this position? When you say how you got there, are you saying that how did I get myself into a relationship where I was having sexual intercourse um, outside of marriage? Or the fact that you were pregnant, which one? The fact that I was pregnant. Okay. Yeah, because okay. I knew what I was doing. I, yeah. I knew what I was doing, yeah. but I thought I was safe. Yeah. Right, I figured out what to do when, mm -hmm. how, and you know, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. You know, you yeah. calculate and stuff yeah. like that. But I missed something mm -hmm. and I ended up in, in a position where I was pregnant. So it was like, how did I get Hey, yeah. I never thought I would be pregnant. Mm. Could you take us through, you know, um, when you made the decision and, and what you had to do? You go to the doctor, mm -hmm. what he says to you, how? And, and I know that you don't mind. Even no, I don't. Because it's important <laughs> for us to understand. Yeah. And for people to know the pros and cons. And if there are any pros, because we are realizing there are no pros to this. There right. are only cons. But yeah. you will share that with us. So. You're pregnant, you decide I'm gonna have an abortion. What's mm -hmm. the next step? The next step, at that point in time, I had a lot of people around me who would have either done it before mm -hmm. or they were around others who had done it. And it was unfortunately a very popular topic of conversation 
if this happens, then you do this. If this doesn't happen, then you do that. So I knew exactly who to go to. Okay. I knew exactly who to yeah. call. And I said, this is the situation. Yeah. And they said, okay, this is what you do. Mm. I remember telling one of my friends, this is what it is and this is how I want to go. And in two days, I had a list of doctors that I could have mm. gone to to start the ball rolling. Mm. Because although it's not a, really a public conversation, privately, people know what yes, to do. everybody knows. They know what to yeah. do and they know where to go and they know who to call. Yeah. And I specifically did not tell people who I knew had the power to change my yes. mind. There yeah. were specific people I knew. I cannot tell this person because then she will drag me to my parents and I would have to deal with this. Mm -hmm. I knew who to call and then they told me where to go. Some people would have assisted me, carried me where I had to go. Mm -hmm. It was like this network, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. It's a network where, mm -hmm. you know, okay, you do this, yeah. you go here, yeah. he tells you there, and yeah. they tell you exactly where to mm -hmm. go to buy what and what yeah. to do and stuff yeah. like that. So when we come back, we'll continue to talk about this network of people who at that time you thought they were your saviors. I mean, after all, you know, they're getting rid, helping you get rid of this baby yeah. for the rest of your life so you would not be shamed. Yeah. But alas, it was a different story. Absolutely. Yeah? When we come back, we continue with one woman's story of abortion. Stay with us. More still to come. I started asking forgiveness, mm -hmm. but I was in a position where I felt like if I couldn't ask God for forgiveness, because yeah. I knew what I was doing. I mm -hmm. knew that it was wrong. Like you said, I was in church. I've been in church all of my life. I know mm. nothing but church. I don't know what mm. outside is. So I knew that it was wrong. Mm -hmm. But I felt like if I couldn't ask God's forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So I started asking my baby's forgiveness. Fan Zone, your reliable, authentic supplier, has just gotten better. You can now visit our website, www.fanzonett.com, for your authentic wear and collectibles. The only place where you can use both your Visa debit and credit cards. Visit our website, fanzonett.com, to make your purchase today. Jean Jean Designs in San Fernando provides customized clothing from sassy to corporate, conservative to casual. Email janiskazo at gmail.com or call 793-1668 for consultations. Live a life of victory and find peace and hope in today's troubled world. Visit us at Holiness Revival Ministries. Call 628-7407 or 622-5826. Take some time for yourself or spend some time with the family at Sandy Point Village Hotel. Enjoy our various studio and suite apartments, self-contained with their own kitchenettes and Wi-Fi. We also have our famous 100-foot swimming pool and our beachfront restaurant, The Steak and Lobster Grill. And our location in Crown Point puts us near the center of activity from the nylon pool to the local nightlife. Call us and make your reservations at 639-8533-389-2378 or email us at sandypointvillagehotel at gmail.com. Join me, Sule A. Joseph, as I delve into the day-to-day -day psychological issues plaguing our society. We will discuss behaviours that encompass the biological influences, social pressures and environmental factors that affect how you think, act and feel. Sight. Thursdays at 11.30 a.m. Only on WESN, Content Capital. Mm. I'm back on track with you. We are back with you as we continue this journey with Karen Elias. And just before the break, you were talking about this network of people that were supposed to take you to your freedom. But this was not the case where you were concerned, mm. was it? Not at that point in yeah. time, no. No, I'm grateful for them, you know. Yeah. I'm grateful for my friends. But in hindsight, yeah. I realized that although they were helping me at that point in time, it hurt me in the long run. Yeah. So while I'm grateful for them and their yeah. help and stuff like that, now I'm like, that was really mm. one of the toughest and hardest things that I've ever yeah. done in my life. Yeah. Karen, take us through. Mm -hmm. You 
decide to go to this doctor? Or is it tablets? What was it? And the procedure. Mm -hmm. You're sure you could go through this because I you don't have to talk sure. about it. You know. <laughs> I am sure. But I think people need to know and understand mm -hmm. and put a real face to abortion. Right. One of the most stunning things that happened to me at that point in time was actually when I went to the doctor. And I sat down in the office and I told him, this is how it is, this is what I want. And I remember him asking me no questions at all. None. He did one physical examination, wrote me a prescription, and sent me on my way. So wait, hold up. He didn't tell you the cons. He didn't take you through the process. He Absolutely didn't share not. with you, you know, having a baby. You know, at least give you an option. He Absolutely just wrote not. a prescription. Correct. And Correct. Mechanical. You didn't find Very it. mechanical. Yeah. And I remember sitting and telling myself, but I'm a young woman. Mm. You know, you can ask a little something, something. Mm. So what, was there a part of you was waiting? You were waiting for him to ask a question? Oh, yeah, question? sure. Oh, I was prepared to yes. answer. You know, yeah. I had notes in my head because yeah. I'm telling myself, I'm a young woman. Mm. I walk into your, in your office. You may ask me a couple of questions. So I was bracing myself for what he was going to ask me. Mm. And then when I said, I'm pregnant, but I don't want it, he said, oh, okay, no problem. And he put me on the, on the table. He did an examination, and he wrote me a prescription, told me how, how to take it, where to go to buy it, and mm. that was it. Mm. That was it. As they say, the, the rest was history. And the rest was history. Yeah. I did what he told me to do, and to this day, I've never felt pain like that before. Mm. And I've had two children. Yeah. And I have never felt pain mm -hmm. like that before. Never mm. in my whole life. It literally felt like if my insides were being ripped mm. apart. Yeah. You're in pain and you're in so much pain mm. that you don't know if to sit down because that hurts, but then you don't know if to stand because that hurts, but yeah. then you don't know if to walk because that yeah. hurts, but then you don't have to lie down yeah. because that hurts yeah. too. So no matter what position you put yourself in. It's so painful. Mm. I know one thing I remember to Nicole, I remember the smell. Mm. I remember the scent of when the content started exiting my body. Mm. It was such a distinct mm. smell that I will never forget yeah. in my life. Yeah. So at that particular time when you took the medication mm -hmm. and you started to be in this excruciating pain at that moment you said to yourself what have i done i started asking forgiveness mm. but i was in a position where i felt like if i couldn't ask god for forgiveness because yeah. i knew what i was doing and mm. i knew that it was wrong like you said i was in church i've been in church all of my life i know mm. nothing but church i don't know what mm. outside is so I knew that it was wrong, mm -hmm. but I felt like if I couldn't ask God's forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So I started asking my baby's forgiveness. Mm -hmm. I remember one day sitting in that pain and feeling everything coming out. And I put my hand on my stomach and I said, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry for doing this to you. Would you please forgive me? Yeah. Yeah. Oh gosh, Karen, mm. I can well imagine. Mm -hmm. I can well imagine. Mm. You got me lost for words there for a second and that's not easy to do where I'm concerned. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but I hear you and I understand, I understand. It, it was a part of you that wanted to let this life, because mm -hmm. you are the mother, say, listen, yes. I'm sorry, yeah. I, you know, you could have been here, yeah. but because of my actions yeah you know you're not here yeah and you felt not in a position to go to god because obviously you are a christian and you know it is wrong so i i want you to take us to that place where you had to realize listen aside and apart from me telling my child i'm sorry i have to talk to god because at the end of the day mm. he loves you in spite of in the midst of this mm -hmm. but you had to go and confess and say listen lord yeah i am your child this is what I have done. Take yeah. us through. Yeah. When I had the procedure, it was an Easter weekend. Oh, gosh, no. 
<laughs> it was an Easter weekend. Oh. So I had to go to church mm. Sunday morning. I had to go to church Sunday morning, and I'm still in ministry at this point in time. Never came out of ministry. And you're a dancer. And I'm a dancer. So that means all the... <gasps> and all the stomach the and the pain and the... All the things. Mm. So I remember sitting in front of the church. I had to sit in the front row that morning, and the worship is happening, and people are praising and worshiping and stuff like that. And I'm like this, holding my head in front of the church, sobbing, sobbing, you know. And I remember the worship leader, he came to me after church, and he said, the presence of God really hit you this morning, but see you weeping. <laughs> and he had he no clue. Knows. <laughs> he had no clue. I'm literally sitting yeah. out there, you know, bleeding out my baby, excuse mm, me for being so raw. That's okay. Um, and he's just there thinking, it's the presence of the Lord. Yeah. And that was hard. That mm. was particularly difficult yeah. to have yeah. to go into the presence and know this is what was yeah. happening with me. When we come back, I want you to continue to speak about the physical pain, but also the emotional trauma, wow. which is something I don't think we speak about Exactly, enough. exactly. Yeah? This is Nicole Larson Live, and we are living in victory every day. More still to come. We don't talk about the emotional trauma that is um, attached to abortion. Mm -hmm. It's literally post-traumatic stress disorder mm -hmm. that you go through mm -hmm. after an abortive process. Because as women, that's one of the things you're created to do. You're created to give life. So when we stop that process, we literally go against our own mm -hmm. nature. Gen Style customizes cards, limitless in expressions. For all special occasions, call 18687NStyle. Instagram Gen Style Cards TT, Facebook at Gen Style. Shay Jean Designs in San Fernando provides customized clothing from sassy to corporate, conservative to casual. Email janiskazoo at gmail.com or call 793 1668 for consultations. Knowing how to tell authentic is as easy as one, two, three. Find it, match it, search it. Step one, find the style number on the tag. Step two, match the style number inside the jersey with the number on the tag. Step three, search it. A quick Google search of the style number will verify the jersey is authentic when the search results match the jersey being searched. Don't be fooled by counterfeit jerseys. Before you buy, remember to find it, match it, search it. Fan Zone, two locations nationwide. Center City Mall, Chaguanas, and Movie Town, Port of Spain. Nationwide delivery available. Live a life of victory and find peace and hope in today's troubled world. Visit us at Holiness Revival Ministries. Call 628-7407 or 622-5826. Back with you on Nicolas and Live. We are living in victory every day. We continue mm -hmm. the physical pain, the emotional pain that yeah. you're not told about. Yeah. Take us through that time of maybe guilt mm. and wondering, what did I do? Mm -hmm. Aside and apart from that physical pain, which you said was beyond words. Yeah. You're so right about that. We don't talk about the emotional trauma that is um, attached to abortion. Mm -hmm. It's literally post-traumatic stress disorder mm -hmm. that you go through mm -hmm. after an abortive process. Because as women, that's one of the things we were created to do. We were created to give life. 
So when we stop that process, we literally go against our own mm. nature as creatures of God, you know. So that's what really hits you. The fact that I, I, I took life. Yeah. And you're expected yeah. to go around your life as normal. Mm. Because most of the time, you don't tell people we took life yeah. and we went against our mm. nature. But we've become so blasé about it now, Karen. It's okay. It's you know, okay. this is not fitting into my schedule, so I got rid of him. Right. I got rid of her. Right. You know? So we try to yeah. bury that now mm. and get up the next morning and la di da di da. Yeah. But it plays on your mind mm -hmm. and it plays on your heart. And that's what's happening with me mm -hmm. in my room. I remember I cried every day for two weeks straight, every single day, Nicole. And I felt tortured. In mm. my mind and in yeah. my body, I felt tortured. I felt specifically tortured because, as I don't know if it was God or whoever would have it, at that point in time, my mother loved to be watching TBN every single morning. Oh, no. And as soon as I get up, I'll be hearing Ron Parsley, who at that point in time had an anti-abortion campaign. So every morning I get up, I would go outside and hear Ron Parsley talking against abortion. And I'm like, I'm going back in mm. my room. I am going back in mm -hmm. my room. <laughs> because you can't face the world. I can't face it. Uh, did you feel inadequate? Did you feel as oh, though? Oh, absolutely. Small, mm -hmm. lower, lower than the, the white mud line. on mm. the ground. Mm. Because I knew what I did. Yeah. And I knew that I took life. Yeah. And I was literally in the verge of a nervous breakdown. Yeah. I remember going to see two counselors, two mm. psychologists, because I just, I couldn't handle it. Yeah. I didn't know how to live yeah. afterwards. What yeah. do I do? How do I live? Mm. How do I go day to day? How do mm. I put one step in front of the other? But you did, and you have lived, and you've gone forward. Yes. I want to touch on that, but before, even before, we need to find out. Mm -hmm. When you told your family this is what you had done. Mm. What was their response? Do you know that I did not tell my family they read the book? Karen. I kid you not. Are you serious? I kid so you not. So it's only when they saw this hardcover book Absolutely. that they realized Absolutely. this is what they did. Why? I didn't have the heart. Why? You didn't have the heart. You didn't know how to. No. Yeah. I didn't have the heart. Yeah. So me telling my story was literally everybody knowing mm. my story besides the people who were involved at that point in time and my husband because I would have told him before we got married. Yeah, yeah. Can we go back a little bit to your child's father? Mm -hmm. Did you tell him about the abortion? Yes. I told him after I made the decision. Mm. I said, this is what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And so he had no say, really. This he is, had no say, really. Yeah. And it's my body. It's, yeah. it, it was, but it was more than my body, mm. you know. It was my shame. Yes. Because you are carrying this child. I will have to be the one to yes, carry. Yes, you are sitting in church. You are the dancer. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. And because I knew the individual, I knew that he would not have been involved in all the processes mm -hmm. that would mm -hmm. have come after, all the legality yeah. and the protocol yeah. and everything like yeah. that. I knew I would have had to go through it alone. Yeah. So it was more than yeah. that. It was, this is my shame that yeah. I would have to carry. And yeah. you would not help me carry the shame. Yeah. So would this you is have, my decision. If you thought that you would have had support, would you have maybe I would have considered kept, it. You would have considered. I would have considered. Yeah. There's another point where I think that you would have considered keeping this child as well. You see that doctor? If he had asked a few he questions. He just needed to ask those questions and tell mm. you what you are doing. Yes, yes. Yeah. If there was forward. Yes, rather than this cut and dry, let me just, you, you sign yeah. something and you just have, get rid of yes. a, a child, a baby. If there is forewarning about the process yeah. and the cons of the process especially, I think a lot of women would still, they would sit and be mm. like, okay, well, let me think about this. Yeah. If they really knew what they were getting yeah. themselves into. Yeah. yeah, You know, the funny thing is, this is not only your story. This is thousands of women. Mm -hmm. This is their story but they would not speak on it. Yeah. And there are times that we want to act as if it's okay. Yeah. You know, it's just like going and buying a pair of shoes. I'll want it, I'll, I'll, I'll take it back. I know. You know? And so now you are saying, no, it's, it is trauma. It is pain, trauma. physical, mental, and even spiritual as well, because with your relationship with God. Yes. 
Tell me how you all mended that relationship because at the end of the day, God still loves us. And this is the point I want to bring even in the show mm -hmm. constantly, that despite some of the, 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 the problems or despite some of the decisions that we make, our God still loves us. Mm -hmm. And we need to be able to go to him and say, listen, Father, this is who I am, forgive mm -hmm. me. And he already knows. But you know, sometimes you would feel, can I go back there, boy? Wow. Because I sin so big, yeah. surely. Yeah. How was your yeah. make back with your father? How was that? How did that go? Well, like I said, church is all that I know. Yeah. And although church is all that I know, yeah. I would see people outside struggle. I would see non-believers in pain. I would mm -hmm. see non-believers hurting. And at that point in time, I told myself, I'd rather struggle with God than struggle without God. Yeah. I'd rather crawl yeah. myself back to him then yeah. turn my back on yeah. him. So I remember one Sunday morning, I literally stretched my hands up as high as I could reach, and I said, God, I'm holding on to you mm -hmm. by a thread, but I promise I will keep holding on yeah. to you and find my way back to wow. you no matter what it takes, yeah. because I'd rather stick here than to go outside oh, and struggle. So you, you said to him, this is who I am. Absolutely. You release the burden. Yeah. And of course, you speak about counseling and so forth. Yes. And then you decided, I'm going to pen this book. People may look at me differently, but no, I'm going to be changing lives. Yes. People I need somebody. to know. Yeah. Karen, you're happily married now with two children. I am. Did you tell your hubby about it, first of all? I did. When you were telling him, did you think that he was going to think differently of you or less of you? I thought exactly <laughs> that. Oh my gosh. I could, when we, I realized, okay, Karen, things get a little serious. Mm. Here. But he's a Christian as yeah. well. And I didn't want him to have to go into a relationship, you know, maybe towards marriage, marriage, not knowing who I am mm -hmm. and what I've done. Mm -hmm. So I remember we sat down outside Papa John's in St. Augustine one afternoon. I said, I need to tell you something. And he said, what? He's, I told him, I had an abortion. Yeah. He said, okay. Oh. Then he said, are you okay? Oh, and I that's said, when yes. you knew this is the man oh, for me. Come on. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I was like, yes, I'm fine. I went through a healing process. He yeah. said, good as long as yeah. you're okay. Anybody listening right now and they want to get a, a copy of this book, and perhaps they need to contact you because they can relate to your issues. Mm -hmm. What are those numbers? What are those? We need to get that book into a lot of people's hands. Women, men, you name it. How can we access this book? My book is where everybody else goes for books. Amazon.com. Yeah. Just type in my name, Karen Elias, and the book is going to come up. The name of the book is Restoration. So you can yeah. type in Restoration as well, and the book is going to come up. You can yeah. find me on Facebook, and you can also find me on Instagram. Just search my name, hop into my DMs. I'm right there to yeah. help you. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. You're welcome. Thank you for being so transparent. Thank you for changing lives with your story. More, still, More to come. still to come, a motivational message from author June Doyle and a powerful song from Nataki Lendo. Live a life of victory and find peace and hope in today's troubled world. Visit us at Holiness Revival Ministries. Call 628-7407 or 622-5826. Gen Style customizes cards. Limitless in expressions. For all special occasions, call 1-868-7N-STYLE. Instagram, Gen Style Cards TT. Facebook at Gen Style. Fan Zone, your reliable, authentic supplier, has just gotten better. You can now visit our website, www.fanzonett.com, for your authentic wear and collectibles. The only place where you can use both your Visa debit and credit cards. Visit our website, fanzonett.com, to make your purchase today. The issue, the continued rise in the price of flour and its impact on the cost of living in Trinidad and Tobago. How should we go about it? I want to ask you what has been revealed to you about the state of vulnerability in the country because of, of this exercise and because of, of what we're going through. Is the government losing the war and the vaccine front? The discussion should revolve around the common good for the greatest number of people in Trinidad and Tobago. How do we inculcate a sense of respect and regard 
people who may not be of your own political ilk or persuasion. The, the communities are not being used by political opportunists. So yeah. I, I when the I'm tables are turned, when the tables are turned, it's the same. It's the same way. Okay, this has been Ten Questions. I'm Andy Johnson, and we we'll see you next time. Take some time for yourself or spend some time with the family at Sandy Point Village Hotel. Enjoy our various studio and suite apartments, self-contained with their own kitchenettes and Wi-Fi. We also have our famous 100-foot swimming pool and our beachfront restaurant, The Steak and Lobster Grill. And our location in Crown Point puts us near the center of activity from the nylon pool to the local nightlife. Call us and make your reservations at 639-8533-389-2378 or email us at sandypointvillagehotel at gmail.com. And now let's hear from today's expert, counselor and mental health professional, Andrea Ragunath Gopal. You may say, but nobody knows. Most times, abortion is a very private journey, and the majority of women who've had abortions need to bear the pain and shame alone. Your grief is real to you, but, but you need to keep it private so you cannot access emotional support. Some women might even be hard on themselves and invalidate their own grief because it resulted from a decision that they made. But your hidden grief may show up as depression, as sleep difficulties, nightmares, or constantly replaying of the abortion in your mind. And you may even reach for drugs and alcohol to suppress the feelings. You want so badly to forget, yet the memory is rehashed every time you see a mom and, an, and a baby nearby. And so you get a secret tattoo to honor your unborn child. You cannot erase emotional memory, but you can develop positive coping strategies. This is where self-compassion comes in. Quit suppressing your feelings. Allow yourself to notice and name your emotions so you can step back and process it. Seek God's forgiveness. Forgive those who may have pushed you to have an abortion and most importantly, forgive yourself. Heal yourself through self-care activities like journaling, naming your baby, and writing a letter to your unborn baby. You may wish to burn that afterward. Seek support from a trusted friend, or even seek professional counseling if it's interfering with your everyday life. Remember that you are a daughter of God and that he loves you despite your flaws and he has a plan for your life. Remember, your pain may lead to your purpose. Now you can offer prayer and support to another woman who is walking the same road because you've been there and done that. And now you can walk in victory. And now some motivation and inspiration from the desk of June Doyle. Before God shaped you in the womb, He knew everything about you. Nothing you are going through takes God by surprise. Nothing, absolutely nothing. The truth is, faith cannot grow without difficulties. Faith grows in the lonely, dark places in your life. Faith is trusting God is still at work even when you cannot see or feel his presence. Before you were a beep on a monitor, God had plans for everything you will go through in this life. The reason you are kept alive is because God has his hand on you. God takes pleasure in the things that are impossible for man, lest any one of us should brag. God is not intimidated with the unknown. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God 
and whatever you ask in Jesus name will be done according to his good pleasure the giver is always better than the gift and we know that God works for the good of all those who love him do not be discouraged the battle is not yours but the Lord this is June Doyle author and motivational speaker signing out keep hope alive Let's make the world a better place for you and for me and for everyone.
my safe haven is you. Ooh. We thank Karen Elias for sharing her life-changing, compelling journey with us today. Along with the very insightful words from counsellor and mental health coach, Andrea Raghunath Gopal. Also Nataki Lendor for a wonderful, inspiring song, and author June Doyle. Thanks to you all for taking the time today, allowing me to share this moment in time with you. Until next time, wishing you a blessed and victorious week from Nicole Larson Live. Living in victory every day.